Right, so today we're doing a M2 competition with a slip to crank up. So I thought it was a perfect opportunity to explain the crank up, what it's about, what fails, alternatives, sort of options, sort of over there. Starting this M2 competition with crank up slip. Uh, we're part way through the job now, but I thought we'd perfect time to show what we're doing and obviously run through what's happened, why it's happened, and how to fix it. So, to start with, obviously, you can see a little selection of crank ups we've done over, over the uh, last couple of years. Uh, we're going to run through what actually happens. So, with one of these hubs, it is a three piece item, literally meaning there's three individual parts to it. So, this that nose is in to the actual crank itself, so it's a floating, so it completely floats on the crank. Everything is down to bolt pressure, so which is done up at a ridiculous top, uh, sort of torque and tightness. So when we do these up, these are 100 newton meters and 270 degrees, and it takes about 500 newton meters roughly, they say, to about undo, actually undo these. So don't get me wrong, they are very tight for the factory, and all ones that have been slipped have actually still been tight. There's a few theories out there. You've got these capture plates. Um, so this is one of these little things. These are a lot smaller than you think when you look at the pictures with the size of it. So the idea of the capture plate is obviously we bolt on here our auxiliary pulley. So this is going to be our dampener pulley that runs our belts, our wall pump, wall pump and so on. So obviously that's going to go on to there and then we will obviously go into the correct position where it will get lined up. So then you re-put the bolts in, talks up, and the old, whole idea of that is then the bolt can't physically come loose, it can't physically undo. It's a great idea, but like I say, every single crank up slip we've had in, they, the bolt's still been fully tight. So these, in our eyes, are literally a waste of time, but some companies sell them and push them. We'll fit them if you want, if you believe in it. Um, but the full fix, the best way, is a one-piece hub. So a one-piece hub, you have no problems with any of these individual components slipping. So obviously you your two timing gears, one runs your oil pump, one runs the actual camshaft. So when these go out of alignment to the top of your camshafts here, you're going to get thrown engine match light as obviously be sure we've shown you as this one has. Uh, and I've got a little picture as well to show where the timing's out. So this is the insane four pin. Again there's a couple of options when it comes to the hubs. Um, you get some that are just a one piece, but no way to sort of lock into the crankshaft. You get some with a little keyway, and you obviously got this one with the four pins. So the whole idea is use a special tool, this one, which we've already done now. So we bolt that into the crankshaft, measure and drill into the crankshaft to allow these pins to physically lock in. So the only way that it ever could though, if it obviously sheared, um, which I say I don't think there's been any failures and there are two and four pin options too but again if you've got something that's obviously even balance and is obviously going to be stronger than having two and doesn't really cost much more so for us it's four pin every time uh, there's a couple of other options on the sort of available uh, you get ones with little splines they call it it's like a spline lock with one piece or a couple of pieces that don't require as much detail obviously with the drilling for us the best way, the strongest way is going to be putting a keyway or pin in. So that's why I always go for these options. Other options are available, we can offer other ones, but this is superior in our eyes. So the reason it actually slips is the standard sort of turbo and response is very spiky. So it's not the amount of torque, it's how it's delivered. So that sudden sort of surge of torque when it comes in, that torque moment, that can cause this to slip. So essentially, under a standard car conditions, you probably wouldn't have any problems. People say stage one don't have issues. In fact, 
the majority of the ones I've had slipped in there actually in stage ones of unknown tunes. This one is stage one, complete standard exhaust, which should sort of help with a sort of lowering that response. Um, but typically stage twos have a lot more issues. So you have stage two, you want full torque, then we definitely recommend one of these to avoid. One, coming off the road, which you could do for obviously waiting for a booking, or you could be somewhere, stuck somewhere, and it'd be in limp mode. Worst case, if it completely slips, the valves touch a piston, and then you've got to take the cylinder head off, and obviously it's a major overhaul with all new valves, and maybe new valve guides. So definitely worth thinking about before you get in tuning. Um, we do offer tuning where you can obviously limit torque. So we can run about 500 foot pounds, and we've done quite a few of these now. So rather than running 550, and it's much more reliable, and we call it crank up safety tuning. So there are options, you don't have to run full torque, and you do can kind of like save yourself this expensive upgrade if you're not looking to chase torque, but you still make good horsepower numbers. So with this, so I would say halfway through, um, this will run through obviously like the tools, so a lot of things come off the car to get this point. Obviously, over time experience, you know what to do, how to do it. Um, but this is your camshafts, and these are obviously your lock in tools here. This is now timed up. Originally, it was out, it was over here, and now that's where it has physically slipped. Hasn't gone far, no piston to valve contact, the carb's still running, luckily. So, obviously, we can literally just retime it it back in. So they've now been locked up with this genuine BMW tool. We've drilled the actual crankshaft itself. So we're ready to just give it a test fit with the actual pin hub and obviously show you the other bits as well. Uh, one of the other common sort of uh, issues we get with these is uh, exhaust cam rattle or noise, especially on cold startup with common the S55 and quite a lot of the later ones do it. So it's all down to the cam alignment. So we've got these special tools here. Uh, again, we do this at the same time, the rock cover's already off. You've got to still do more, you'll pull the injectors out, change the actual Teflon seals and a few other seals as well. Uh, but these tools, these are mine over here. So, injectors are all removed, these parts are removed, and these sit over the actual exhaust camshaft carrier. I have to undo the bolts and essentially re -talk. Obviously, this is pretension, so this causes alignment, so the noise is down to the alignment. So if you hear like a bit of a noise, a bit of a tap that's abnormal, this can be done at the same time as well, or can be done at a separate job. Right, so you can see here, obviously this is the nose of the crankshaft, all your drilled, ready to accept the new insane four-pin crank hub. Some people get worried about all the swarf. There are a couple ways of doing this. We always remove the sump, so everything is all covered up, cleaned, with no issues there. Um, yeah, some people had to do this without taking the sump off, which is always a bit of a worry. Like things might change, but for me, all the swarf and all the sort of material and getting to everything you need, you can't guarantee 100% that nothing comes through. So it costs a bit more, obviously in gaskets, bolts, obviously in time, but I'll be honest with the time bit, that shouldn't really make much of a factor. But this is the best way to do it. So subframes down, all the trims are off, sumps off, obviously wheels off all charge bikes is a major overhaul job. Um, so the parts we actually need to replace as well. So this is obviously a, a stretch bolt, so that's that's for replace. And so that is difficult to do up. That's more of a two person job um, with a big three quarter inch bar is still a struggle. Um, on that note, there's a few tools that BMWs aren't good enough, so we've had made our own ones. Um, so the actual crankshaft is locked up with a flywheel, which is just at the back there. So that, that locks the crankshaft at TDC, and then obviously some of the camshaft locking tools. More stretch bolts, you've got the cam bolts, oil pump bolts, new steering rack bolt, all the little caps we replace. Um, obviously new rock hard gasket, new sump gasket, all new sump bolts. These are made of, I think they're magnesium or a light alloy. Um, so these are like one time use bolts only. New bolts to the actual crank hub, to the actual pulley, get supplied. Uh, a couple of other tools that we have. 
So this is for timing the actual camshaft pulleys. Which, I'll show you here. These are all independent, so that times them. Again, all genuine B&W tools, so you can obviously do the, do the, the best possible job. Uh, you also have to pre-tension the actual timing chain too. And this is done using this little tool here, so it has real low sort of torque settings. So yeah, put tension on that. That goes in rather than the actual tension itself, so that threads in, and that's how you sort of get the timing literally spot on. Um, a special tool holding the oil pump, so you can do that so it doesn't move around. And obviously a new blanking plate and a new crank seal while you're there. Fresh oil and fresh oil filter, uh, usually BMW genuine stuff, so you know you're getting the best as well. And then put it back in, time up, start up, run out, run through the coolant, and it's yeah, all good to go. And then this one, um, although it's already stage one, had a discussion with the customer, it's going to do an equal length exhaust system, so we're going to do a GPF leak, which means it needs a retune, and it's going to go through the XTEC race wrong, so it might do a part two on this one as well, we're actually doing the tuning at stage 1.5. So, we'll get back to it, get all that together, and then get someone back on the road. There you go. M2 with the crank up step, cars in re timed, um, four posts cleared, checked, road tested, levels corrected, full check over which always do, quick, quick engine bay clean as well. And then uh, we're actually untuning on this one too, which we'll run through in another video. So obviously now, no, it was better before, the car will start on the busing with no drivetrain errors. Now, perfect idle, straight away, start straight away. So obviously uh, we've got the timing out, we've, uh, we've run through that, it's now all been corrected. And uh, we're now doing many miles, we can run big power with zero issues, many worries, any more slip, thanks to the 14 crank up. 